Well, hi, I'm Craig Gumbel. Welcome to our New York studios and to the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. Tonight marks CBS Sports' 22nd year covering March Madness. And once again, from first round tip to trophy presentation, this is your home for all the emotion and drama that is the NCAA Basketball Tournament. I am joined this evening by my partners, Clark Kellogg and Bill Raftery, who not so quietly have awaited this moment. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing quite like it, Greg. Let's go ahead and show these people the field of you, 65. You going to let Bill have a word? Thrills yeah, and chills, <laughs> exhilarating time for a lot of young people. All right, get your pencils and your brackets ready. Coming up, we'll bring you the exclusive live announcement of the seedings and pairings for the tournament. First, some background details. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatic, 34 are at large. An opening round game will be played in Dayton on Tuesday night between the 65th and 64th seeded teams, narrowing the field to 64. The pod system put in place for the first time last year is in effect again to allow as many teams as possible to play their first and second round games close to home. And this is how the Final Four will shape up this year. On Saturday, the 5th of April down in New Orleans, the winners of the South will play the East champions in one national semifinal, while the Midwest and the West will meet in the other. And then the national championship game will be contested on Monday night. April the 7th. Now we begin the proceedings with a look at this year's number one seeds and we begin in the Midwest. Kentucky's Wildcats are the number one seed in the Midwest. A number one seed for the eighth time. 25 and 6 is a number one seed. Dominant defensively, unselfish at the offensive end. This team has an excellent chance to win it all in New Orleans. And riding a 23 game winning streak going into the tournament. Number one in the West, the Wildcats of Arizona. Entering the tournament as a number one seed for the fifth time, Bill. Well, like Kentucky, they have a chance to win it all, too. They have the ability, depth-wise, to bank people inside. Terrific head and wall to make passes and Gardner in the backcourt. Texas is the number one seed in the South. It's the first time the Longhorns have been a top seed. They're strong inside, but the man who makes them go is the speed merchant, T.J. Ford, a player of the year candidate. They've got outside shooting. They've got a full package in their pantry. And who is number one? one in the East, the Oklahoma Sooners coming off the Big 12 championship today. Well, Kevin Sampson smiling is in the backcourt. The price is right as he finds people and penetrates. Qantas White, one of those guys also. They're solid. They need some good inside play to be a factor. So Oklahoma, a number one seed for the fifth time in Sooner history. Uh, some things that need explaining here. Everybody assumed that Kentucky was going to be a top seed in the South. They're number one in the Midwest because they're actually closer to the Midwest Regional in Minneapolis mm -hmm. than they are in San Antonio. So they switched them, and Texas is number one in the South. Mm -hmm. They're closer to home in San Antonio. My question to you guys is, what happened to the Kansas Jayhawks? Well, we talked all day and the last week or two about how it was going to come down to two of those three teams from the Big 12. And I think maybe head-to-head -head competition came into play despite Kansas winning the regular season championship. They only played Oklahoma once, and Oklahoma mm -hmm. beat them. I think they value the tournament more, the committee, in picking Oklahoma. All right, guys, here's the question for the singular wireless fan poll. Do you agree with the choice of this year's four number one seeds? Singular wireless users send vote to 171 or log on to cbsportsline.com slash singular. We will have the results later in the program. A lot of teams and their fans have been gathering around the country, eagerly awaiting word as to where they'll be playing and, in some cases, if they'll be playing in the 2003 NCAA tournament. We shall see. Coming up, we'll reveal the South bracket when the NCAA basketball championship selection show continues on CBS after this. CBS Sports NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by Coca-Cola Classic. Let's make it real. Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And by McDonald's. Welcome back to our New York studios, everyone. It is now time to reveal the seedings and the pairings. Here's a look at the tournament bracket from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Coca-Cola. Let's look at the South. These are Friday, Sunday matchups in Birmingham, Alabama. Right at the very top, the top seed in the South, the Texas Longhorns at 22 and 6 on the year, will play the winner of the opening round game in Dayton on Tuesday night between UNC Asheville making its first NCAA tournament appearance and the Tigers of Texas Southern. The 
number eight seed, the LSU Tigers, making their first trip to the tournament since 2000, goes against the Purdue Boilermakers in the tournament also for the first time since 2000. Spokane, Washington on Thursday and Saturday, the Yukon Huskies. They've been to the Sweet 16 for the last eight years. They're the number five seed. They will beat number, meet number 12, BYU, making their 20th NCAA tournament appearance. The Stanford Cardinal, the number four seed in the South, will meet San Diego. The Toreros won the WCC tournament. That's a matchup in Spokane. In Tampa, Florida on Friday and Sunday, the number two seed in the South, the Florida Gators, their fifth straight trip to the NCAA tournament. They will meet number 15, Sam Houston State, in the tournament for the very first time. The number seven seed in the South, Michigan State, the Spartans, been to the final four, three of the last four years, will meet the Buffaloes of Colorado. Colorado's the number 10 seed, their first NCAA appearance since 1997, and there's jubilation in Boulder, Colorado, as the Buffaloes are headed to the dance. In Nashville, Tennessee, Friday, Sunday, the number three seed, Xavier, the Musketeers, winners of the Atlantic 10 West Division in the conference regular season. They'll meet the number 14 seed, the Trojans of Troy State, winners of the Atlantic Sun Conference Tournament. The number six seed, the defending NCAA champion Terrapins of Maryland, and they'll face the number 11 seed, UNC Wilmington. The Seahawks won the regular season and the Colonial Athletic Association Tournament. So that's a look at the South bracket. What do you you guys see well Purdue and LSU jumps out as a terrific game because LSU is getting better right. at the right time of the year and then Michigan State the Colorado kids right to be excited David Harrison with a triple double against Nebraska Stefan Pele 27 points in the winter against Kansas but think of it just a couple of days later could be Michigan State and Florida yeah it could be it's actually Florida being a number two seed kind of surprised me there I didn't think they would get to that line I thought maybe the three or four line so that was a bit of a surprise and then certainly you look at Maryland UConn LSU all intriguing teams in that LSU and UConn are getting better late. Maryland, a team with that valuable championship experience from a year ago. And I have to tell you, right off the bat, that Michigan State Colorado matchup looks like a dandy <laughs> basketball yeah, two game. Two physical teams. All right, guys, we'll take a timeout. Next up, we'll reveal the brackets in the East when the selection show continues live on CBS in a moment. He has his three guards in there now. Down to 14 seconds. Oh, almost stolen by Drexler. Boy, they, is he good at they've that. They've got to drive to the basket. Down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg. Oh, that's a long way. Oh, it's they won it. On the dunk. Welcome back to the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show here on CBS. And here's a look at the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion singular. Let's look at the East now. These games Thursday, Saturday in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And rightfully, the number one seed in the East, the Oklahoma Sooners. A ninth straight NCAA appearance. They were in the Final Four last year. They'll meet the Bulldogs of South Carolina State, the winners of the MEAC regular season and tournament. The number eight seed in the East, the Golden Bears of California, making their third straight trip to the NCAA tournament. And they will meet the ninth seed, Wolfpack, North Carolina State, coached by Herb Sendek. On Friday, Sunday, oh, first of all, there is a look as the Wolfpack celebrates in Greensboro, North Carolina. Congratulations to North Carolina State. Now, Friday, Sunday in Birmingham, Alabama, the number five seed, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State, so impressive today. Lost the championship game, the SEC tournament to Kentucky. They will meet 12th seeded Butler, the Bulldogs. Crushed a year ago, ecstatic now in Indianapolis, winners of the Horizon League regular season championship. They're on their way as the 12th seed in the East. <laughs> the number four seed in the East, the Louisville Cardinals, winners of the Conference USA Tournament, coached by Rick Pitino. They'll meet the 13th seeded governors of Austin P. They won the regular season and Ohio Valley Conference Tournament title, and they go into the tournament winners of 14 of their last 15 games. In Tampa on Friday and Sunday, the number two seed in the East, 
the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, 24 and 5, winners of the ACC regular season title. They're celebrating their slot as a number two seed in the East. Now, who are they going to play? They'll play the Bucks of East Tennessee State, winners of the Southern Conference Tournament in the NCAA Tournament for the first time since 1992. The number seven seed in the East, the Hawks of St. Joseph's out of the Atlantic 10 in the tournament for the second time in three years. And they uh, are sitting there and having themselves a decent time. The Auburn Tigers, the number 10 seed. Auburn making its eighth tournament appearance, its first since the year 2000. Cliff Ellis, the head coach of the Auburn Tigers, who come in at 20 and 11. Friday, Sunday in Boston, Massachusetts, the number three seed in the East, the Orange Men of Syracuse, heading to the NCAA tournament for the 22nd time under coach Jim Beheim. They'll take on the Manhattan Jaspers, who won both the regular season and the MAC tournament coached by Bobby Gonzalez. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys are the number six seed in the East. The Cowboys making their sixth straight NCAA appearance, and they'll meet the Penn Quakers in the tournament for the fourth time in five years. They hit the tournament, having won 14 straight games. That's a look at the East, and what do you see, guys? Well, Cal jumps out at me. I would admit to me, one of the best passing big men. Ben Braun changes defenses, uh, a lot of zone. But, you know, when you think of North Carolina State, we talked about that Princeton offense, what they do to move you around. That should be, and the winner of that gets Oklahoma the next <laughs> weekend. Of course, Syracuse with Jimmy Bayheim, done Bobby Gonzalez, the quick talk. Manhattan mentor. A lot of local fans will be up there enjoying that ball game. And Manhattan has beaten a couple of teams in the Big East. And they own New York right now. A couple right. That's exactly right. One of the things jumped out at me, Butler as a 12 seed, maybe one of the last at-large teams to get in. Perhaps Georgia's absence may be creating a spot for Butler to get in. And then also I look at a matchup, Oklahoma State and Pennsylvania. That Pennsylvania team out of Ivy League, one of three teams in conference play to go unbeaten this year. Weber State and Kentucky, the other two. How about down the road a possibility? of Oklahoma meeting Oklahoma State. Let's uh, let's check in with Kelvin Sampson, who is the head coach of the top seed Oklahoma Sooners, and he rounds up the number one seed in the East. Coach, congratulations on your Big 12 championship, on your number one seed. Does this number one seed come as a surprise to you? There seemed to be some question about it throughout the weekend. I don't know if it was a surprise. <clears throat> There's just so many deserving teams. Um, you know, uh, going into the day, you get asked that question so much, and I felt like Kansas <laughs> and Texas from our from our league going into the, today had deserved it. You know, Kansas won our regular season. Uh, they went 14 and two. Uh, Texas uh, finished second, uh, and they had a tremendous year. Um, but you know, we came on strong and won the uh, conference tournament championship. But I thought that any of those three teams could have been a uh, one seed. And if it had been Kansas or Texas, I would have said congratulations to them. And we would have ran with the two seed, just like we did last year. But uh, we're thrilled to death to be a one seed. Kelvin, talk about the condition of your team. We saw in your championship game today against Missouri, Hollis Price banged up a little bit. I know you don't know maybe exactly what's going on with him, but what is, what is his status and the condition of your team physically and mentally right now? Oh, we, we just looked like we had gotten a big old fist fight. I mean, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, these, these tournaments are like a war of attrition. I mean, they're just uh, fist fights from the word go. We had a tough physical game with Colorado on Friday. Texas Tech overtime yesterday, uh, Missouri game that, that we lost a 20-point lead in, uh, but found a way to win at the end. These are all tough games in these, these tournaments, and uh, at the end of the day, you, you look back, and instead of analyzing it, you just feel happy and elated that you won. But as far as um, Hollis, he, he'll be okay. I mean, he's one of those kids that you've got to shoot him square in the head. If you wing <laughs> him, he's going to come at you. Coach. You better get him square. Coach, we thank you very much. Congratulations to you, and Thanks, we Sheldon. will see you along the road to the Final Four. Okay. When we come Thanks, back, guys. we'll find out which teams have been slotted into the Midwest bracket after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to New York as we continue live on the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. Right now, a look at the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Pontiac. Let's take our first peek in the Midwest. These are Friday, Sunday games in Nashville. And the top seed in the Midwest, the Kentucky Wildcats. 25 and 5 in their last 30 NCAA tournament games. They will beat number 16. Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. Their first NCAA berth in their fifth season at the Division I level. The number eight seed in the Midwest, the Ducks of Oregon, winners of the Pac-10 Tournament Championship. They'll take on the ninth-seeded Utes of Utah, coached 
by Rick Majerus, winners of the regular season Mountain West regular seed season. In Spokane, Washington on Thursday and Saturday, the number five seed, the Wisconsin Badgers out of the Big Ten, the Big Ten regular season champions. They'll take on the Wildcats of Weber State, winners of the Big Sky regular season and tournament at 26 and five. Number four seed in the Midwest, the Dayton Flyers, who won the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. Their opponents, 13th seed Golden Hurricane out of Tulsa, who won the WAC Tournament Championship and in the tournament for the third time in four years. Now to the Friday Sunday window in Boston, Massachusetts. The number two seed in the Midwest, the Pitt Panthers, winners of the Big East Conference Tournament. And there are the Pitt Panthers waving. Yeah, we salute your number two seed in the Get Midwest. Get with it, guys. guys. Get a little excited. And the number 15 seed will be the Seahawks of Wagner, winners of the Northeast Conference Tournament tournament and regular season titles. They'll make their first trip to the NCAA tournament. Number seven in the Midwest, Indiana, the Hoosiers, their 18th straight NCAA tournament. They'll take on the Crimson Tide of Alabama, the number 10 seed, Bama making consecutive appearances for the first time since 94 and 95. In Indianapolis on Thursday and Saturday, the number three seed in the Midwest, the Golden Eagles of Marquette, returning to the tournament for the second straight season. They'll meet the Crusaders of Holy Cross, the number 14 seed out of the Patriot League. They won the Patriot League regular season and tournament championships. And the number six seed in the Midwest, how impressive were they in the Big 12? The Missouri Tigers, the number six seed out of the Midwest in the tournament for the fifth straight season. Congratulations to the Tigers. Who will they meet? Well, they'll meet the number 11 seed in the Midwest, the Salukis of Southern Illinois, winners of the Missouri Valley Conference regular season title. I think both those teams are all set to take each other on right now and may not be able to wait until the middle of next week. Let's take a look at this bracket. Well, Weber State jumps out with Wisconsin because Jermaine Boyat, the country will get a chance to see how good he is. Little show, Arsenault was the big, well, you're the big show as well. Uh, an outstanding performer. And of course, Wisconsin, Kirk Penny, terrific team philosophy. They really move you around. Little guys post up. Very tough to defend. Well, you look at Dayton, a deserving number four seed, but they've got to go out to Spokane, Washington, and Tulsa has won 11 of their last 13. A very difficult matchup for the number four seed at Dayton Flyers. How about Indiana coach Mike Davis looking <laughs> ahead right. at, a pos at a matchup against his uh, former sure, team school, the yeah, Alabama, Alabama Crimson Tide. He's an assistant coach there, and of course, you know, they've started to play some pretty good basketball of late. Mm -hmm. They have to play small. Their big guys have to step up. Exactly. The Leach and Newton right. have to get it done, and then Coverdale started to find the shot a little bit later in the you season. You know, the other, the other item in there. A possible second round matchup is Utah against Kentucky, a replay of the 95 championship game. Someone is the bane of someone's Ooh, existence. Don't mention Kentucky. The Rick Majerus. <laughs> <laughs> Make it the 98 games of the championship game. Some pretty good matchups there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. All Looking right, guys. A reminder after the show. Fill out your brackets online and then follow your teams to the final four at cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users simply enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Just one bracket remains. Question, will the Tennessee Volunteers make it into the field out west? We'll find out when the selection show continues here on CBS right after this. As we welcome you back to our studios here in New York, a look now at the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champions as we reveal the fourth and final bracket representing the west. Salt Lake City Thursday and Saturday, the top seed in the west, the Wildcats of Arizona, their 19th straight NCAA appearance, the regular season Pac-10 champions. They will take on the 16th seed, Catamounts of Vermont, won the America East Tournament. They earned their first ever NCAA berth. The number eight seed out west, the Bearcats of Cincinnati at 17 and 11, a 12th straight tournament appearance for Bob Huggins' crew. And they'll take on number nine seed, Bulldogs of Gonzaga, the winners of the West Coast Conference regular season championship. Now, on Thursday and Saturday in Indianapolis, the number five seed, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, a third straight trip to the NCAA. It's first time that's happened since the 88 through 90 seasons. And the Irish out of the Big East will take on the number 12 seed, Panthers of Wisconsin-Milwaukee in the tournament for the first time out of the Horizon League. The number four seed in the West, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, Big Ten Conference Tournament champions. There are the Illini in Chicago, sitting around wondering who they're gonna meet. Here's who they're gonna meet, the 13th seed in the West are the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, winners of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament and in the NCAAs for the third straight year. The Thursday-Saturday window now as we move to the bottom of the bracket in Oklahoma City. 
The number two seed, the Kansas Jayhawks, won the Big 12 regular season title with a 14-2 record, a Final Four team last year. They will meet the 15th seed in the West, the Aggies of Utah State, winners of the Big West Conference Tournament Championship. The number seven seed in the West, the Memphis Tigers, returning to the tournament for the first time since 1996. Coached by John Calipari, they will meet the Sun Devils of Arizona State, who are in the tournament for the first time since 1995. Now on the Thursday-Saturday window in Salt Lake City, the number three seed in the West, the Duke Blue Devils. 19 times in the last 20 years in the tournament, they'll face Colorado State, who won the Mountain West Tournament Championship. They're in the tournament for the first time since 1990. The last two teams, number six seed, Creighton Blue Jays, the winners of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship. Five straight years they've been in the tournament. They will meet the Chippewas of Central Michigan, the number 11 seed in the West, winners of the MAC regular season and tournament titles, and in the tournament for the first time since 1987. As we look at the West, there are an awful lot of heavy hitters there. <laughs> well, there are, but I want to sneak to a, maybe not a heavy hitter, but University of Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee. You know, Bruce Pearl's won at the Division II level. I mean, they're an aggressive team. They're really a confident team. And Andy must shoot the ball well and knock those threes down Chris Thomas has to get into the teeth of the defense and kick it out Illinois on a nice roll of late cap the big cap capsulized by the Big Ten Tournament Championship today Gonzaga strongly in the field a very big physical team up front with good guard play interesting matchup with Cincinnati then looking at the bottom you take a look Memphis has come on strong here late Central Michigan and Creighton Central Michigan has one of the best big men in the country and Chris came and speaking of big men how about Chris Massey with Memphis I mean he and I Diago, they're going to be banging one another underneath. <laughs> It'll be fun to watch those two go after one another. Well, as we said, the top seed in the West uh, are the Arizona Wildcats. And joining us live now, the head coach of the Wildcats, Lute Olson, who has taken a team, counting his tours of duty at Iowa as well as Arizona, taken this team to an NCAA tournament 24 of the last 25 years. Coach, thank you for joining us, and congratulations. Does this get to be a little bit old hat, or do you still get a little bit excited? No, it, I don't think it ever gets old hat. Uh, you're always anxious to see who it is you're going to play and who's in the bracket, so uh, I don't think it'll ever get old hat. Talk about preparation as you get your team ready for this tournament, Luke. You've had a terrific year to this point, but um, what concerns you most as you move forward? Well, I, I you know, we had really been playing very, very well, and, and then we ended up uh, with a little blip on the screen with uh, UCLA, but they played very well against us but I'm not too sure that that might not help us going in instead of having a winning streak uh, uh, going in and and a lot of pressure that way I I think uh, it'll be a little easier to motivate our guys to to be ready to uh, to play in Salt Lake so I'm I'm excited our, uh, about our chances. Lute I love the hairdo anybody with gray hair is generally a terrific <laughs> coach uh, I may have been the exception though but what are some of the things you saw late in the season or areas you thought you could improve uh, and, and have you done those things the last few days? Yeah we've uh, you know I've I was concerned about uh, our field goal percentage uh, but I think uh, over the last six eight games we've done a nice job in that area. Uh, maybe uh, allowing too many offensive rebounds has been a concern. Uh, we haven't been real healthy all year long, but uh, recently now we're, we're the best shape that we've been for some time. Luke Walton is back to maybe about 80 percent, and, and Salim Stoudemire, I think, is close to 100 percent. So we're ready uh, at this point. I think we're playing the best basketball that we've played all year long. So uh, that's all you can ask when you, when you hit the tournament. Coach, as usual this time of year, there's been a lot of discussion about which teams are going to make it and who goes where. And I'm just wondering on balance if maybe this perhaps is the most balanced uh, set of teams for the tournament that's been around in a while. Well, I, I think so. There are so many good teams that, uh, you know, you take a look at the brackets and, well, is this one tougher than that one? I know in the West we've got some very heavy hitters uh, uh, out here, and, and uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be a great region. Uh, but I, I think there would be... Uh, uh, the people in the other regions too could make a strong case I think for their particular region but when you get to the NCAA playoffs uh, I think it's the most exciting time in sports and and uh, there will certainly be a lot of great games I think as we uh, as we look at teams going through uh, hopefully to in our case to the final four but it takes 
a very good team and you also have to be very lucky to get there. Coach, congratulations to you and to the Wildcats and uh, of course we will check in with you periodically as, as time goes on. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks a lot, Greg. It's nice to be on. Thank thanks you, so Coach. Coach Lute Olson of Arizona. Right now, let's get a Midwest reaction. Hit to Chicago in reaction from our colleagues, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Guys? All right, thank you, Greg. And my first reaction, I'm disappointed. I see a couple of things here. You can always shoot holes through the brackets, but when you put Kentucky and Arizona on the same side of the bracket for the national semifinals, I thought that was going to be a no-brainer. Kentucky would be in either the east or the south, so it couldn't play Arizona until the finals. I can already hear you yelling for a reseed at the final four. Those two ones hold up. Jim, I always feel that there should be a reseeding at the final four in regard to a reestablishment of teams, but in this particular case, not only the situation where the two teams that we knew were going to be number one seeds played better than anybody else, but also the fact that on the other side of the bracket, if everything holds true, you'd have two teams from the Big 12 in the same bracket, so you'd have one conference having a, a situation over there, and you'd have Kentucky playing Arizona. Ridiculous. And the, and the answer we heard was because the Midwest is uh, some, well, closer to Lexington, so it would be the closest bracket for them. By how many I miles? looked it up. If they were in Albany, which is the regional for the East, it's 810 miles. It's 790 to miles. Minneapolis. So those are the longest 20 miles and certainly impacting the brackets. The other thing that kind of stands out, Texas, because it'll play the opening round winner, the 64-65 game. Hey, we're going to ask Jim Livengood, but they're saying Texas then is the number one team in the tournament. I, I, I don't understand that. I can't buy that at all, particularly in the fact move Oklahoma. Wait a second. Texas got beat out in the quarterfinals of their conference tournament. Kansas is below them. Oklahoma had to get moved. So I, I think Texas got a big break there. And that West is just too loaded. You got Arizona, which was number one most of the season. Kansas, the Big 12 regular season champ. Duke wins the ACC How about tournament. Illinois? Illinois four. wins the Big Ten tournament. Did they lock this in before today? Did these games mean anything? It looks like the postseason conference tournaments were meaningless because Illinois, a team at a four, we, we thought that they could even be as high as a two. Okay, Billy, let's take a look at the conference breakdown. Does this fall pretty much like you saw it? Yeah, I think that that falls in place. I think the Big East uh, actually lost two of the bubble players in uh, a situation where Seton Hall and BC were two teams we thought had a chance, but I, I thought Big East maybe could go as far as six, and here they are down at four. And the bubble teams you talked of, bound here. Boston College out. And they won their division well, in the Big East. I'm going to have to ask, I'm gonna have to ask a question about Texas Tech and Alabama if those are two teams. Alabama's in, Texas Tech is out. How, do, how does that play? All right, so we have an abundance of questions out here in Chicago. And uh, the last teams in, when you look at it, the at-large teams with the lowest seeds, and that would be BYU and Butler. Good for Butler getting in this well, year I, after being yeah, left out last definitely. year. With the 25 wins, I think that they uh, deserve a good shot. All right, we have uh, the questions coming up with the chairman of the committee. But first, let's go back to Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? All right, Jim, Billy, yeah, don't go anywhere because we are going to let you vent on anybody we can grab. But first, uh, let's uh, take a look at the brackets one more time and just uh, tell us tell us what begins to stand out in your mind and we'll begin in the South. Well, we'll take a look at the South and look and see what's going on there. I think when you look at the teams that could surprise that are playing really well, UConn, certainly LSU, one of those kinds of teams. We take a look at the rest of the field here. And Texas being number one, Billy and Jim both made some interesting points, although I'll take exception with the Illinois situation a little later. But again, the committee has some reasons for that. I'm not sure what they are. Bill, what else do you see on the... Well, you know, Chris, we're, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing how Texas uh, handles things as they went this defensively, but also Connecticut, another team. You know, the, the, the area of where should somebody be, who should be dropped, and we'll get into a few of those as we go along. Connecticut, a very tough team. Uh, I really don't have any argument in this area. No, I don't either. I yeah. think when you look at it on balance, um, it's pretty solid. And, and we go to the bottom bottom half of this the This was a question mark that I had just based on the fact that Florida stumbled a little bit late. I thought they maybe got seeded a little higher than deserved by getting that two seed, but everything else in that particular yeah. region. Xavier, I thought, deserved I, the three based on absolutely. their long winning streak. Even though they had the loss at the end, I right. think they deserved mm -hmm. it. And then number six seed, Maryland. Dangerous team they, there. This is a team that I legitimately has a shot. Although UNC Wilmington knocked off USC last year in the first round. All right, guys, let's take a review now of the East. And the East is uh, one of those teams that, or one of those areas that Jimmy and Billy uh, are just, I think they're just well, waiting about to Syrac go like crazy. Yeah. Live well, and how good. about Syracuse? If, in fact, they're able to advance according to form, they would be playing in Albany in the regional, which would be very comfortable for the Orangemen. Yeah, let's take a look at the, uh, you know, the Orange, too. Jim Beheim is uh, has got to be, a, you know, really antsy to get underway because I know his school is 
school feels like it, you know, it put on a good showing in the Big mm -hmm. East, and there's mm -hmm. even more coming. Yeah, they've got a very good basketball team, one of the best players in the country, and Carmelo Anthony. And the advantage of the pod system will be near home. He'll be a very happy guy. Yeah. Do you like the pod system, by the way? Well, I, I think for, it's for a reason. It's for the better teams is uh, uh, to give them a little credit for their job well done. Mississippi State, you know, I was thinking when the Butler kids were jumping on that pile, when they got off the pile, and they said Mississippi State. You know, <laughs> uh, pretty darn good. And the Louisville, Louisville Cardinals are there. And St. Joe's another one of those teams, I think, legitimate uh, backcourt. They could really uh, make some music. All right, let's go to the Midwest now. And the rundown has Kentucky up there at the top against IUPUI. The Jaguars got in in one of the magic moments so far of the tournament. Ron Hunter, the coach there, Oregon and Utah. Interesting styles here. When you look at Oregon, Utah, you look at Wisconsin, Weber State. And again, Dayton, a number four seed, deserved that, but has to go out to Spokane, and they'll face a very tough and streaky in, Tulsa. In I this portion of the bracket, I know we're talking about dangerous teams. You guys talk about Holy Cross all the time. Well, this is a tough matchup Side. for them. When you look at this matchup, the physicality of Marquette up front may be a little more than Holy Cross can handle, but they're a very solid basketball team and still dangerous. And I think Pittsburgh has a legitimate gripe not to be a number one. All right. Why? And, How could they be well, a number they, one? They rolled the table here. They played great basketball. They didn't have a. They were 16 0 at home. You're going to bring that up. <laughs> no, I'm not going to bring it up. The road. I thought. Uh, but oh, a, the I, I think Illinois has a complaint. I thought they should be higher. Oh, okay. All right. Higher in the West than they are. And the Arizona number one seed will take on Vermont. Look at the other half, and you see Duke ranked ahead, and you also see Kansas up ahead. And Kansas, again, it, it was a debate between who could get that number one seed. I don't think you can argue there. And right. watch Either out for Texas, Memphis. Oklahoma, or Kansas. Well, guess what? The uh, live meet is coming up. We'll talk live with the selection committee chair, Jim Livengood. We continue on CBS right after this. CBA Sports NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, Applebee's. And by Intel Centrino Mobile Technology, laptop technology designed to unwire your life. Welcome back to the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. And joining us live from Indianapolis now is Jim Livengood, the chair of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee and the athletic director at the University of Arizona. Jim, welcome. This is the part of your job now where you kind of have that target on your back. Let me, uh, let me throw out at you that perhaps the, the question, last year's Butler might be this year's Boston College. Champions of their division in the Big East. What kept the Eagles from getting into the tournament? Well, Greg, remember now we're the committee looks at the entire year. Uh, this is a, these are tough decisions in that. We have a lot of parity in college basketball, which we've talked about throughout the year. Uh, when you look at a Boston College, uh, in, the, in the opinion of the committee, uh, the year did not measure up in terms of that. They were very close, and uh, just those kinds of things. We have to make those kinds of decisions, and, and unfortunately, we can only select 34 at large. Jim Nansen, Billy Packer in Chicago. Jim. All right, Jim, I want to say first off, I know you have to step out of the room when Arizona is discussed, but boy, no favors cut for the Wildcats there. That's as loaded a bracket as I've ever seen with Kansas, Duke, and Illinois right behind Arizona. But Arizona and Kentucky on the same side of the bracket. Why? Why did this happen? A meeting well, in the Jim, national semifinals if they get that far. Jim, we obviously don't uh, try to, to look ahead. We the committee can't predict in terms of who might win, and so that part of it right there isn't part of what we do. Uh, the other issue is as we go through and seed those number one teams and, and bracket them, uh, we're trying to make sure that we're, we're doing the best job for their fans and their teams in terms of where they're going to play. So that's just the way it worked out. Uh, it, it'll be, uh, be very interesting, but again, it's very, very hard, and the committee really would do a, a great injustice if we tried to predict ahead. All right, and let me ask you this then. Texas plays the, the winner of the Tuesday night game. So based on that, I guess you'd have to say Texas is the number one overall seed in the tournament, a team that went out early in the Big 12 tournament, finished second in the league standings. Here's Kentucky that's won 23 straight games, didn't lose an SEC regular season game, won the tournament. How is Texas rated higher by the committee than Kentucky? Well, it, it, it isn't. Jim, we look at four number one seeds, and it, that just happened to be the way that that Texas in terms of who they're going to play in terms of the, their first round opponent. But, but that's not the way. We, we select four first round, first seeds and number one seeds and uh, we go from there. So I, I don't think uh, that'd be going down the right path. Jim, one of the things that I want to go on the other end of the spectrum is who got left out. One of the teams that's in there and they're a 10th seed is Alabama. 
certainly had their problems the second half of the season. Texas Tech, playing in a league that you guys gave equal weight to, the Big 12, played extremely well. You had Alabama get knocked out of their postseason conference tournament right away. Texas Tech uh, playing probably two of the finest games played all year. How is Texas Tech on the way out and Alabama rated in? Billy, good, uh, tough, tough call. And remember now, we're, we're trying to make the, the best decision we can as a group of 10 people. 10 other people might, uh, might choose another way. Uh, Texas Tech uh, played in a very good conference, as you mentioned, but so did Alabama. The SEC had a great year as well. Alabama did what the committee asked in terms of as it went out, as it scheduled, and so uh, when, when, they, when teams do as we ask with regards to their scheduling, uh, that was rewarded. At, at the end of the day, as we went down through, uh, those are tough calls. Somebody gets in, somebody doesn't get in, but uh, uh, it's, that's just the way it has to be in terms of when you can only select 34 at large. One other thing I want to ask in, in, in postseason conference tournament. Now, let's take a look at Pitt. They're an Eastern team. They won the Big East. Then they won the Big East tournament for the first time ever. They're going to be ending up, if they continue to move forward the tournament, in Minneapolis. And then you have Syracuse that did not make it to the Big East final, ends up having an opportunity to play in Boston, and then at Albany, basically a home game. How does Pitt, that finished both ahead of them in the regular season and wins the conference tournament, have to go travel, and Syracuse, the team, comes in behind, plays basically at home well Billy part of that is again remember we look at the whole body of work we look at the entire year and in the, in the committee's opinion as we look through that uh, we're not putting Pitt at a disadvantage uh, and, and nor we're putting uh, putting Syracuse uh, some you can argue in terms of where they're going to play uh, but I don't think that's a competitive disadvantage or advantage either way you like Syracuse playing in Albany not as an advantage to their team as opposed to Pitt playing in Minneapolis well, it, it all depends on how you look at it. Again, as we look at it, uh, we think that's a very a, a fair seed and also a fair uh, for assignment in the bracket. Any thought whatsoever of someday down the line, and I know you're the chairman right now, and, it's, and Jim, let me, let me explain this to you. In my opinion, it's getting harder and harder every year, not easier because of the parity in college basketball. But is there any thought ever going to be given, and you say you can't look ahead, but basically that is your responsibility to look ahead, of getting in a situation where the teams would be repaired in the Final Four so we don't have the two teams this year that everybody agreed were the best two teams in the country having potentially to play in the semifinals? Well, Billy, that question has come up a number of times, but not with the committee. That's certainly not part of the area that we work in, and, and that could happen. I would react to your first question. I think you're exactly right. Uh, it is getting tougher and tougher. And, and when you take and, and look at college basketball and how closely paired everybody is right now, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to get easier. You're right. It's going to get a lot tougher because you're only looking at 34. Uh, I don't know. Maybe down the line, maybe in, in, some, in, a, in some years, maybe that will be an option. But right now, we really have to be very careful not to look ahead and predict who we think might win, might not win. I think that would be unfair to the teams involved. Hey, Jim, back to that West bracket that, again, is so powerful. Give me the case of Duke being the three, wins the ACC tournament today, Illinois the four, wins the Big Ten tournament, and they're looking at Florida right now as the two in the South, a team that lost three games late in the year. What do you tell Duke and Illinois? How much importance, how much stock did you guys put in their championships that happened late here in the proceedings as you guys are getting down to the wire trying to figure out how to bracket this? Well, Jim, I, th those, I think those become factors. It's, it's obviously it's easier uh, the earlier we know results and those kind of things. But again, in the case of Florida, we're trying to, to value the entire body of work. We're trying to value the en entire year. Florida had a, had a terrific year. And, and certainly not saying that, that Duke didn't and, and, and so on. But that, as we look ahead, the, the, at some point in time, a decision has to be made. And we've got to be able to, to, to make the right seed, make the right call as a group of 10 people, and then move on from there. So some of those kinds of answers, again, it'd be very hard, and another group of people might look at it a, a different way. This group, this committee, uh, I think did a fabulous job with regards to trying to make sure that we were fair and consistent and, uh, and, and the integrity of the process, which is critically important, and making sure that every team got a fair shake and that we did not spend a short amount of time but a long amount of time on every team. Jim, thank you so much for your time and hanging in there on some of those questions. We appreciate it. Looking forward to the tournament here straight ahead. Thanks, guys. 
Uh, Billy, I really do think, though, that with the addition last year of the pod system, it has gotten so confusing to try to figure out who's in, who's out, the last team's in, that sometimes when you do get down to the wire, maybe there's not too much movement based on the Sunday games. And I think we really see that here today. I, I don't think there's any question about it, Jim. And I, I'd like to go ahead and say in regard to which is the toughest region. Without question, no question. I've got to go with the West. I've got to go East, number two. Uh, with that, and I think that the uh, South is number three. And without question, I think Kentucky Kentucky finds themselves in the driver's seat, and maybe they deserve that. They were the best team in the country in regard to particularly down the wire here. Kentucky right behind it has Pitt as the two, Marquette the three, Dayton the four, and Wisconsin, which won the regular season but went out in its first game here at the Big Ten Tournament, is number five. Let's make a few predictions here. Some sleeper teams, and what catches my eye right away is the south bracket, and in the five, six slots, UConn and Maryland both could be extremely dangerous. Well, when you think of what they have accomplished throughout the course of the year, particularly the way that UConn came out at the end of the year as a five seed that is strong and here they are a five seed right alongside of Notre Dame in another bracket as a five seed no comparison between what those two teams did at the end of this year any other sleepers we we should watch for in your eye well I, I think that uh, what is really interesting to me is a club like Mississippi State that showed today everybody ran rough shot over Kentucky I like Mississippi State's chances all right first glance our picks here for the final four well I'll go along with okay. you I'm going with a chalk I'll, I'll take Duke in the West okay Duke as a three seat. Mike Krzyzewski for about 12-15. We'll also have live primetime coverage on both nights beginning at 7 Eastern time. Let the madness begin. For Clark, Raft, Jim and Billy, Greg Dumble in New York. For all of us here at CBS, see Thursday.